Remind me to never invite you to a party though, you've absolutely just pissed on the parade completely here. Welcome back to the Let's Talk Racing YouTube channel in association with Racing TV. We're going to preview the Wednesday of the Cheltenham Festival on this video. We do hope you enjoyed the first one. And if you did enjoy it, please hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And do get your comments down below. Second day, you've had probably a heavy night on the Tuesday. How are you feeling waking up on the Wednesday morning? I'd say very ropey, Josh, knowing me. Um, not good when I've had a few vodka Red Bulls the previous night, but sure, look, sometimes you got to roll with the punches on Cheltenham Week, and I'm sure I will. I'll be getting down into Pret-a-Manger, get a little chicken fillet roll, <laughs> get getting myself pumped up, get into Paddy Power, power hour time at 10 a.m., and then up to the course, and we go again into the Guinness Village, 11 a.m., me and my dad, one point in hand. Let's get back into it. Cannot wait. I think on a Wednesday morning, I'm doing a bit of work actually. Actually, if you wanted to come and, and, and see me do it, the Racing TV have got two uh, pubs in the centre of Cheltenham and at half ten each day I am going to be doing a ten minute talk about the racing that day with Alex Stevens. So if you do want to come along to that, feel free if you're if you're out and about or you might be in those pubs anyway and I'll just come and say hello. I'd pay good money to see you at half ten on Wednesday morning. Now, after the night I'm going to give you on Tuesday night, I will pay great money to see you even turn up. I will be there, but whether I'll be there in my entire, I'm not sure. Uh, let's then focus on the racing on Wednesday. And the first race is the two-mile five furlong Ballymore. The Ballymore. We've had 24 million Ballymore trials this season. This is the one. And I'm looking forward to hopefully... Sir Gerhard running here. I think if he runs, he wins. He'll have too much speed. He's won a point to point over three miles. And I think he's going to have too much for them here. I'd have no problem with him staying. I know he's by Jeremy, which means that he should technically be a two miler. Yeah, I have to agree. I'm going to be flip flopping with what you've probably seen in the previous video. If you've watched the day one, I said, whichever one of the Mullins two in the Supreme, whichever oh. one of the Mullins two in this, I think it will be Sir Gerard. I, I said that in the first video. I said Dysart Dynamo is more here. like. He'll run here. But that being said, if Dysart Dynamo is in the Ballymore, you're going to start having. <laughs> cold sweats because I've put him up at 25 to 1 one of the greatest bifters of all time if he runs in this race I do believe personally without taking my money into account it will be Sir Gerhard in this race I don't see him getting beat either and I think the race could cut up a little bit in behind not sure it's one of the greatest Ballymore fields in behind as well would take on journey with me all day long wouldn't be for me whatsoever so uh, Sir Gerhard if he goes here massive chance yeah and Ginto is a, is a very smart prospect for fences next year I think he'd have a great chance if Sagerhard doesn't run but I fear that a lot of trainers are fearing Sagerhard and if he runs the likes of Ginto could go elsewhere potentially the next race is the RSA I don't know what it's called now the Brown Advisory novices chase over three miles and this has been a horrid horrid year for this race I put up Gallop in the Champ after last year's Cheltenham Festival at 25 to 1 He's now evens, but by the time the Wednesday comes around, he probably most likely is going to be declared for the Turners over two and a half miles, taking on Bob Ollinger, if, if Willie Mullins is out there and wants to give me a birthday present, an early birthday present, please run Galapin de Champ in this race. He'd take the world of beating, and I'm not sure you'll beat Bob. If he runs here, Galapin de Champ, if he doesn't, it's a completely different race. And I just side with Brave Man's game. I think he jumps the best of them all. I wouldn't have a problem with him staying the trip or the track. I think he'd be fairly versatile. I think he'll win next year's King George. What would be interesting is if Venetia sees the Turners and sees Gallop and Deschamp and Bob Ollinger taking each other on. She's still got La Homme Press who could run here. He might be one of interest. Yeah, very much so. It all depends on whether Gallop and Deschamps runs. I actually do want him to run in this race, not only for yourself, because it would give us great credibility, you bunking <laughs> in a 25 to 1-er, but also, like, I, I just think he should be running in this race, personally speaking. And I, I, I've been feeling that Willie Munns has slightly been kind of putting the wool over our eyes, but the more and more the days go on, the more and more it seems genuine that they're actually going to run in the Turners, which I just can't understand why you'd take on, Bob. But... They're, they're smarter men than myself. I've said that before many a time. It becomes a 
a strange race. It becomes a lot more competitive without him there. Uh, I probably would side with a Hoy Senor myself. Uh, I don't see Brave Man's game getting up the hill uh, in a three mile around Cheltenham. And I agree with everything you said. I've agree. I agree that he's probably the most professional. He's the best jumper. He's next year's King George winner. Agree. 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 All I. I'm not agreeing with is that when Harry Cobden's flexing his muscles on this horse with two furlongs to go at Cheltenham there mightn't be anything under the bonnet because from what I'm seeing in these races at Newbury and stuff like that when he pushes there's not much there and he does so much travelling and I, I love him for it but I got sucked into him massively last year for the Ballymore and I'm not getting sucked in again until I actually see him do it at Cheltenham I just wonder whether something's just better than him and might outstay him the rest of the Irish contingent, I think, are average enough, really, in this race. Capadano, Fury Road, maybe, Farouk Delen. None of them would be massive plays for myself. Uh, and then you're getting down to 300 through 5. One of my favourites, but surely he can't win a Brown Advisory. One horse I do think is interesting. If Gallop and Deschamps goes to the two-and-a-half-mile race, I think he's potentially going to go very close in whatever race he runs in. But he's in the Arkle, the Turners, and the three-mile race, and that's Jungle Boogie. Now, he's won a, a bumper, a novice hurdle, and a beginner's chase. He's only ran three times, and he could be one really lurking under the radar. If he runs here, and he's a double-figure price, I can see me putting him up rather than Brave Man's Game at 7-4. to four. The Coral Cup is up next, over two miles and five furlongs. It's a helter-skelter race, a million runners, a million hurdles, and... If you can pick the winner of this, then you're a better judge than me. What do you fancy? Yeah, I have a brutal record in the race, Josh. Let's call a spade a spade. I've, I've barely ever got close to backing a winner in the race. Uh, I've got two that I've been keen on for around a week since I saw the weights. One of them's the Skeleton Horse Unexpected Party. A uh, lovely grey horse is improving all the time. Won well at Ascot last time out. Needs to be held on to, which could suit in a Coral Cup. Hopefully Harry Skelton can just keep hunting away, hunting away. He come home. Uh, maybe better than some at 9-1 to one, I think he's got a chance and the horse that I put up in the handicap video for the plate and I know some people ask me about him because uh, I seem to be a little bit wayward on it because I don't know where he's actually going to go but it's the shunter and I just think of a £7 lower hurdle mark he may well turn up in a Coral Cup rather than run off top weight in the plate he's 16-1 to one each way non-runner no bet I think that's a fairly fair price considering you're obviously getting your non-runner concession and also I think if he goes for the Coral Cup look, if he's declared on the day there's no way that horse is going off a double figure price I don't think I think there'll be money around for him given connections JP Emmett Mullins and also the fact he's a bloody good horse as well and he's potentially well handicapped over hurdles so to shunt an unexpected party for me but I do warn that my record in the Coral Cup is dismal well, the one winner that I have backed in this race is Dan De Company, trained by Nicky Henderson. And given it's such an open race, I'm going to go for a big price. And he's currently 40 to 1 in places. He's 33 elsewhere. And that's Call Me Lord. I've banged his drum for a couple of weeks now. And I'm starting to really warm to him. Mainly because I just think he's being overlooked. He's run three times at Cheltenham. The first being winning the international hurdle, a grade 2 over 2 miles. He then finished uh, down the field in a champion hurdle. But a champion hurdle... And then also he was seven lengths behind Song for Someone when he won the international hurdle in 2020. I think 142 is very lenient for him. And I, I know he's been dropping down, but he was once a grade one horse. He was once rated 161. He's now 20 pounds less than that almost. And the run in the Lanzarote two starts ago, he was staying onto the line. It was over, it was over distance, sorry. And I think he's just going under the radar. They did something similar with William Henry, who it, it didn't really work chasing wise with him they reverted back to hurdles he went and won this call me lord went chasing at the start of the year he didn't like it they reverted back to hurdles as an older horse like william henry and i could just see him going close i think he's a, a big price for a horse that did show plenty of ability and isn't 11 years old he's only nine it wouldn't surprise me if he still had one big race in him and call me lord at a big price for the coral cup nicky henderson hopefully will have had one winner by now in Call Me Lord and they will be hoping for the feature race to land the feature in the Queen Mother Champion Chase Shishkin is the 4-7 to seven favourite I believe and they've got the likes of Enigamine in behind you've got Shakan Porsoir who's never shown it over this side of the Irish Sea you've got Nube Negra in there as well Politolog hopefully bowing out 
um, with a good run in the champion chase. I'm not sure he's good enough to win it. I'm not sure he's good enough to place. But hopefully he runs well. Shishkin, does he just get the job done? I think he does. I think there will probably be a moment of worry. And uh, knowing the way he runs, that maybe at some stage an Ergamine or a Shakan, if he's at his best, might get this horse off the bridle, turning down the hill. But I think he'll end up powering past them. Everyone will know I'm Shakan Porsois' biggest fan. He'll probably carry a few of my uh, sympathy money more than anything than that. And I'll be the first person to be clapping him into the winner's enclosure. I just can't see it happening, though. I must say, I think Shishkin will be beating an Ergamine uh, in this. And as a result, with the prices the way they are, not dissimilar to the champion hurdle with Honeysuckle and Appreciated, I'll be leaving the race alone. I'm not going to get tied up into trying to you know, magic some without the mar without the favourite market bet. I just don't see it to be the case because I think an Erga means every chance of being second. Uh, so Shishkin for me and uh, leave the race alone and potentially see a great race. I would love a situation where the three of them are quite close jump at the last and that would be the, the spectacle we all want to see and uh, fingers crossed we'll get that. What's your thoughts on Put the Kettle on running here over the Mare's Chase? I think she's got no chance in this. Nice and blunt. Yeah, I think that this year's champion chase might be a, a couple of steps above last year's. I personally look at Enigamine and Shishkin in the Clarence House chase and I see far much more improvement from Shishkin than there. Left-handed, a stiff finish, better ground. I think it will suit uh, Shishkin where Enigamine probably had all of his conditions right at Ascot. The next race is the cross-country chase and Tiger Roll isn't running in this year's Grand National and his final run looks set to be this race. Is he going to bow out at the top? I think he is, yeah. Uh, I think it's a pretty poor cross country, if I'm being honest. Uh, I don't know whether Delta Work will run or not. Even if he does run, I'd be tempted to take him on. I've just got a thing against horses having their first run over the cross country banks. It's sometimes very hard to win first time out over them, even though he's by far the classiest horse of the lot of them. Uh, so Tiger Roll 2 to 1 might be the worst price in the world. If you got four places maybe in the race, and I know he's got an awful lot to find on ratings, but just given the fact that he's most likely to run a very good race, I might have a few each way nickels on Diesel Dallier, a horse that's done us a good turn or two already this year. I just think the JP horses, there's, a, there's complications. Prengard ran useless at Nace, don't know how you could back him. Shady Operator doesn't really stay. The other horse as well hasn't really taken to Cheltenham either in times gone by. So you might find that a horse like a Diesel Dallier who just loves Cheltenham, loves three miles six around there, might sneak into a place. He's 14 to one, but fingers crossed Tiger Roll can do it because it'll bring down the house. I would love to see Tiger Roll win this. That being said, I'm going to spoil the party. If Delta Work runs, I think I'd back Delta Work. If he was to take to the cross country fences, and from schooling videos and from the vibes of Gordon Elliott and Jiggins Town, he has done very well. I would prefer Tiger Roll to win, but my head is saying Delta Work could just be a bit classier than him. And it would be a shame, wouldn't it? I, I, I don't think we'll see Delta Work run purely because there is no way that Gordon Elliott or Jiggins Town want Tiger Roll to be beaten. Imagine if Tiger Roll was second to Delta Work on his final start. Remind me to never invite you to a party, though. You've absolutely just pissed on the parade completely here, telling us that Delta Work would beat Tiger Roll. Like, you can't be saying that. It's a Cheltenham video. You've got to appeal to the masses. The masses are just waiting there. It's like the Simpsons meme there, where they're all looking at Bar. Say the word, say the word, looking for you to say Tiger Roll wins, and you've just said Delta the work's gonna spoil the party. I just make it one to four that I back Dell to work in the race next year. So I'm just getting it in early. I don't know. Tiger Roll. I'd like to see Tiger Roll win. I just think Delta Work will. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, the next race is the Grand Daniel Two Mile Handicap Chase. You won't need to guess which horse I'm putting up here. It's Buddy Rich, the horse I've been banging the drum about all season. If it gets into a battle, he might not be the most resolute. He might not dig deep when you need him. I'm hoping it's not the case. I'm hoping Davy sat there on the bridle, jumping the last, and away he goes. And justice for Intukas last year. I'm still not over that. Oh, it's, I'm genuinely still not over that. What would you do if Buddy Rich is involved in a battle in the last 100 yards with some, you know, a sky pirate or something, a horse that has just done you before, 
and he gets done ahead like in Tuca's last year. I think that might be the end of you. I might have to find a new co-host of this thing next year. Yeah, I wouldn't expect a, a Cheltenham review video, put it that way. <laughs> and I might have to sell the channel on. I'm not sure I could take that. I'm really not sure I could take that. I certainly wouldn't, out be, wouldn't be out for a few beers that night. I'd be home, tucked up in bed, hoping that... Bob Ollinger can get me off to a winning start on the Thursday and we can put Buddy Rich and Tukas firmly behind us. I've, I've liked Buddy Rich all year. I love the profile. He's a novice. He ran second to third time lucky in October. I thought that was very eye-catching. He's been put away since. Scored and Elliott loves him. David Russell just put me off slightly um, when I spoke to him about him and he said that he's just not the most resolute in a finish and I'm not sure about his character. Uh, I don't know. I'm hoping he gets the job done. He's down to 5, 6 to 1 now. We put him up at 20s. I would love him to win. I think it's almost a fear now. I think if I'd put him up a week ago at 7, 8 to 1, I'd be all over him. Whether now I've put him at big prices, I'm just getting carried away. You like Buddy Rich. Come on, convince me, Andrew, that he's going to get the job done. I think he's got a massive chance, Josh. Look, I've been I've been supporting you massively throughout it. It's great that I, because I'd say Buddy Rich has been your big one of the year, and obviously Bardenstein's been my big one, and we've managed to convince each other about the other one, which I don't know how we've done them, probably chewing each other's ears off. But, uh, but look, I think he's got a great chance. I think he'll be the last off the bridle. I'm hoping it's chosen mate stuff here, and Davy swoops into the lead, uh, coming down to the last... He then gets over it and then maybe he doesn't find that much in front but still wins Cozy by a length or two. I still think, you know, he's 6-1 to one now or something like that. It's probably not the greatest price in the world. He'd prefer to be on at 20s like your good self, but I think he takes the world of beating. It's not a good grand annual as well, I don't think. I, well, I just, you know, may, maybe I'm being harsh. There might be a few improvers in there, but... I feel there's been more competitive Grand Annuals in years gone by, and I think it's a winnable race, and hopefully Buddy Rich is that winner. The team. Buddy Rich FC. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Um, the champion bumper is the final race then on the Wednesday, and American Mike is second favourite, but favourite at 8-11 to 11 in a champion bumper is Fasal Vega. He's been extremely impressive on his two starts. Should he be 8-11? to 11? Ah, he should be favourite based off what he's done, to be fair to him. 8-11 to is a skimpy price uh, when you can think that, uh, I think, appreciated having done pretty much the exact same in that festival bumper at, at, at Leopardstown was, I think, 2-1 to one still on the day for the champion bumper, even though he was running against the likes of Fernie Hollow. It just seems short given the standard we're dealing with. And it really does look like an above average bumper. I know we probably say that every year. But you look at American Mike, you look at even these horses that have won one bumper. Redemption Day, uh, Mercury, James's Gate. I know not all of them will run, but some of them will. And some of them will have big chances as well. All the way down the list to even horses at 33, 40 to 1 that might have a squeak. I think with the prices the way they are... With the vibes out of the yard, I think you have to be on American Mike in this. I'd be taking Fasal Vega on, potentially a little bit reluctantly, but he's 5-2 to two American Mike, and they just seem so bullish about him that you're almost there going, it's almost too good to be true. And before Fasal Vega came on the scene, before Christmas, this American Mike could not be beating the bumper. Nobody could see it getting beat, and now you're getting actually a proper backable price when I'd have thought back in December time that it would be American Mike being 8-11 to 11 and something else being 5-2 to two. so he'd be for me one that I am interested in just a I, I need a bookmaker paying four places or five places maybe and you might get that if it's a big field in the champion bumper I do think Joyo Machan will run a big big race he has that form at Faso Vega Christmas time did very well in the circumstances to win at Navan and the vibes are that he could run above his price of 40 to 1 at the moment but I would want maybe an extra place to put that bet off. I also like American Mike and I'm not going to make a case for him because I think you've hit all the nails on the head. I'm not going to put her up but I think she'll run well and that's rosy red rum uh, for Milton Harris. Four year old getting all the allowances. I think she gets 17 pounds in allowances given she's a mare, given she's a four year old and I spoke to Milton Harris funnily enough I was on a train last week coming back from Paul Nichols. And he was literally sat in the seat next to me. I didn't realise uh, until he had the radio up and he was, he was listening to, I think, a horse called Technological uh, finish at Taunton. And I got my racing TV uh, subscription out of my phone and showed him the race. And he's very thankful. And we got chatting. I asked about Mullenbeg. Will she run here? Because she won a bumper um, at the trials meeting. He said that she might run at Sandown. 
but the one to look out for who looks a lot more impressive on the gallops and, and in work is Rosie Redrum, to the extent where he said that I think she's listed class on the flat. Um, so I think that she could be a big price. I think she's 30 to 1. I think she's 40 to 1. And it's not a tip, but I might have a couple of quid each way just for her to run well. Like you say, if bookmakers are offering four or five places in a race like this, that she would definitely be of interest. So Rosie Redrum at a massive price in the bumper, but the one I think will win is American Mike. Uh, genuinely, if Fasal Vega was 2 to 1 and American Mike was 2 to 1, I think I'd back American Mike. It's not purely because of the prices. I just think that he could be the smarter prospect. Who knows? We're going to find out. But thank you ever so much for watching this video. We do hope you've enjoyed the first one. Hope you enjoyed the second one as well. And do like the video. It massively helps the channel um, if you did enjoy it. Do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And do get those comments down below. We had the comments yesterday from the seven horses that you fancy on day one. And we want to see the seven horses that you fancy on day two. Get them down in the comments. We look forward to reading one of those.